I like how you said around the axle of reductions, which does inherently give VA healthcare kind of like a bad taste. But there's an opposite to that because I am a huge fan of VA healthcare, um, especially when it comes to evidence. And I'm telling you right now, if you have a disability that is up for reevaluation and you have zero, and I mean zero evidence of VA healthcare records showing that you're seeking treatment for that condition, that condition has gotten worse or gotten better. The lack of evidence in lieu of is going to, is going to, um, you're going to get a reduction. And, and, and in that instance, okay, let me roll back. In that instance where you have mental health, there's zero evidence, it was up for re examination. Can the VA reduce you without an exam? They absolutely can because technically speaking, they have all the evidence they need to issue that reduction. Now, there's a whole 30-day, 60-day appeal process you can deal with, but to just avoid that, okay, seek health care because that can also protect your ratings, okay? So it goes in, you know, it's it's this weird tandem relationship where um, I would advise veterans to I wouldn't say be careful because that's not the right connotation I want I want to I, I would advise. I would just say be mindful of the words that come out of your mouth when it goes to your healthcare team, right? And just be be honest. Say, "Hey, I'm dealing with this. You know, it hurts. It still hurts." Um or I'm managing it better, right? "Hey, physical therapy for my back, it is helping me because I'm doing strengthening on my hamstrings." Right? So now my hamstrings are taking more of the load. My back still hurts. Right. And so that's how I would navigate that. So VA healthcare is good. That's what I want to end that with. And then I want to transition to Jason, our last topic, which is private healthcare records. And there's two sides of this too. I generally see when a veteran has evidence from private healthcare records and it blows my mind, um, they submit the claim and then it's denied. And they're like, Hey, I had all the evidence. I'm like, well, let's look at your decision letter. And when it, when they say I have all the evidence, I see no in service, you know, record, no current diagnosis. I'm like, well, this says you don't. And then and then they say, oh, well, I have I have private records. So <clears> then I go in the in the in the decision letter, right below the decision is the evidence that was reviewed, and I look. It says VA healthcare records. You know, DBQ from CMP examiner, DD two fourteen or whatever it is that the evidence reviewed, and I don't see your private records. Meaning, you have to submit your private records with your claim. Now, that works t t two ways. One, which is what I recommend, is only sending the VA the relevant medical evidence. If you're claiming a knee condition, they don't, you know, you don't need to send in your blood work records, just the relevant evidence for, for your knee. Um, and the second way, which I don't really recommend, I think it's a 4142 don't quote me on that, but it's a it's VA form that allows the VA to request mm. your private records in its entirety. OK, and the reason I would not recommend that is because there could also be competing evidence. Right. There's evidence for there's evidence against. I'm on the I'm on the page of the veteran requesting their private records, which is a billion times easier than getting it from the VA. OK. Request your private records, and then you handpick the evidence you want the VA to see. That's my recommendation for that. Do you have any? Do you have any two cents on private health records? And obviously, this applies to those veterans that have access to private insurance, which, which in a lot of cases, is not the case. Right. Um, so you you nailed nailed exactly my same sentiments on 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 that, and that is. You, the beauty of private medical records, going and seeing a private doctor somewhere, is that you can control what the VA receives. And I'm in the same camp as you. There's no reason to have uh, the VA get your records for you. Get them yourself. One, it's faster. Mm -hmm. So as far as sake of time is concerned, it's faster if you get them versus the VA. Um, and again, you get to have eyes on everything, supply only what's needed to, uh, support the claimed condition or conditions that you're filing for. There's no reason to have anything else in there. 
Um, so yes, absolutely. The other thing is, in in contrast to the majority of VA medical facilities, the private side is more apt to work with you with regard to DBQs, with regard to nexus letters, that type of stuff, if need be for a claim um, versus the, the VA healthcare system. A lot of VA healthcare systems out there, uh, they don't want to complete a, a DBQ for you. They don't want to uh, get involved with writing a nexus letter, uh, those types of things. There are workarounds, right? You can just use the verbiage from the schedule of ratings, right? In your appointments and just make sure that you're very direct with that. And then maybe go to the, the little office and, and give them a form that you wanna have them add into your medical records regarding your signs and symptoms, just so that way it's put in there. Um, but with the uh, civilian side, <clears throat> private medical, you have a, a, a better opportunity to work with the doctor to really, I guess we'll call it manufacture. I, I don't know why I like that word now, but to manufacture the evidence that's needed to support your claim, uh, specifically with regard to VA claims for compensation, right? Because they're looking for certain things. Um, so you can work with your doctor with that. One of the drawbacks that I hear sometimes is, you know, maybe the doctor doesn't want to do it or the the doctor doesn't want to uh, complete the DBQ or they feel, you know, whatever, which way about it. Um, a couple different, I'll put it out there like this. In some cases, you're going to have a medical provider, doctor, who maybe that's been the family doctor. They've known you since you were whatever age. And and it's a very bedside mannery type thing, smaller kind of venue. Um, so, so they may be more apt to that and maybe even block off time to be like, Hey, let's set another appointment and we'll sit down and we'll complete this thing together. That's awesome. Not everybody gets that, you know, so you might have to drop it off at your doctor's front office and say, Hey, I need the doctor to fill this thing out. My suggestion is if you're not able to sit side by side with your doctor to fill this thing out. And, and I, again, I'm like a broken record. You are the patient. You know you better than anybody. So if you're not able to be there as a resource for that doctor, then my suggestion is, look, don't complete the form for them, right? You're not supposed to. It, it specifically says you don't do that. But you could take another sheet of paper and go, okay, here's my response to item one, number two, number three, number four because you're not there to answer the questions if he has a question for you. So you want to be able to supply them with the information they need to be able to complete the form. You know, how often are you having this? How often are you doing that? Because it's very specific targeting the schedule of ratings for VA compensation purposes, which is not always necessarily in line with a medical provider is just trying to treat you, right? So, so they don't quite dovetail correctly. So that's why you need to provide that information directly again from the schedule of ratings for that doctor. And you want to make it somewhat easy for them so you can do that and give them both of those. Here's the blank DBQ. Here's my responses to help you complete it and then give it to the front office, ask them to complete it and submit it or and return it back to you. Right. My conversation, just as another piece here, just to kind of, I guess, a, a tip or trick with regard to getting those completed, you know, some people think, you know, my, my doctor doesn't want to spend the time to do that, right? Because they want to make money. Well, guess what? You're the patient. And if you frame it correctly, right, they might be a little more apt to completing it. And my conversation with the doctor would be, hey, look, I have some forms that I need to get completed for the VA so I can get reimbursed for medical expenses. You know, would you mind completing this form for me? What the, what the doctor business owner or, or not, right. But whatever the doctor is thinking, okay, cool. I'll continue to have a patient that might even step up the game a little bit and show up even more often because they're getting reimbursed for their medical expenses. What, whatever they think is what they think. But I'm just saying that if you, if you, kind of word it that way, they might be a little more apt to helping you out versus, hey, you know, I want to, you know, can you fill this form out for the VA? Because I want to go get all my care taken over there. Or, or I want to, you know, go see the VA and have them do my medical stuff. I want to leave your office, you know, type of mindset is is not going to be conducive to having them help you. 
So um, you're, you're, again, your words matter. So as far as the private side's concerned, I think that the biggest takeaway, Clay, is, is what you said. Uh, and I totally agree. And that is that you ultimately have the control of what it's going to look like and what of it you can take out and 